Welcome to Builds with Blocks, a show centered around the micro-action figures and brick-based construction sets of the Halo universe. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, and I'm joined by Tom Fishenden. This is not true. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it's, okay, so that, that was a failed attempt at doing an impression of the grave mind, but moving forward, hello there. Just say it without the, the grave mind accent. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it got, as got, British I've got as you to can. Do it properly. It's okay. I've got this. <clears throat> this is not your grave, but you are welcome in it. Matt Salvatore. I've smelled that stench before. I had a shower. <laughs> and the new official co-host, Gabe from G Custom Creations. Welcome, Gabe, Woo! to the team. Hello, everyone. I do have a question, though. Go ahead. What would you have your arbiter do? That was Ooh. pretty good. Oh my god. That was Bravo. very good. <laughs> Making like the rest this. of us look like amateurs. We can do so much with this now. I like this edition. <laughs> so Gabe's going to be a regular on the show now and uh, producing some content for you all. We are excited to have him as a part of the team. So look forward for for um, some great stuff from Gabe. He already does great stuff. He, he, he does I, I'm, some, I'm very excited. Some cool Finally figures and whatnot. On the and, show. Yeah, we're excited to... See what else he can get out there for you all. Um, it's a perfect time for him to join, too, because today we're going to be talking about uh, the Halo Infinite figures. We're going to be talking blind bags. We're going to be talking the um, the armor packs um, and the, the Spartan pack and the Marine pack. That's the key. The key. And we may touch on the, the, the buildable helmet. Um, I'm the only one that has that, but I feel like we need to get that one out there finally. Some thoughts on that. Um, so, yeah, we're excited to, to talk to you about all these additional sets. We're almost through the full wave. There's just a couple little little stragglers that we haven't touched <laughs> on, but this is kind of the, the main, the beef of it. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll cover off on the, the rest of the tricklers that come out towards the end of the year. But before we get into the main show, a uh, main topic of the show, let's go around the horn and talk about what we've been doing on the building front um let's start with matt this time matt how about what have you been up to don't say not too uh, much don't say not too much um (laughs) quite a bit quite a bit (laughs) i've been working on a couple of custom lifts for the pelican so you've obviously seen that if you're following the channel so we got the scorpion sting lift and the warthog rally lift so Mm -hmm. i was really happy with how those turned out um it's kind of nice having those being able to be carried by the pelican so i'm happy with that and I think people I got... appreciate you sharing that that system because it's super simple, like just a, a handful of pieces for both of them. Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely be doing well, that right. as well. The cool thing about the both systems is that they don't require to be taken off if you want to split the Pelican. So it's uh, yeah. because it's sectioned on each side, you can still keep each system hooked on without having to take it off to split the Pelican. So I was happy that that actually kind of worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have you, been you... building a couple of things for my mock. So I'll probably Ooh. be teasing that with a video. It's nothing too big, but just kind of a little little banished edition. Um, okay. And I collected the Halo Hero series that we're about to talk about. So shout out to my brother who made a Walmart run and uh, was able to pick them up for me. And nice. first time pickup, he picked every single figure from the line. So I yeah. was able to get nice. all of them in one, one swoop. That's huge. That <laughs> means that you got a fresh box hand, so. because the Pelicans are right in yeah. front. And, you know, somebody yeah. that's not a collector yeah. will just grab them because they're just grabbing the front one. Usually, yeah. a lot of times they'll keep those in the back or something like that. But that's great, man. Very cool. Well, let's go around the horn to Tom. Yeah, so obviously when I haven't been putting hours in perfecting my Gravemind impression... Um, <laughs> I <laughs> I have actually been spending silly amounts of money on Mega Constructs. <laughs> um, so I got a couple of really, really cool packages recently, one of which you will have seen a video on at this point, um, the other of which isn't going to have an unboxing video purely because it's got a lot of Jurassic stuff in it as well, so it doesn't feel particularly relevant. Um, Mm -hmm. But obviously you have seen the one that I got from your lovely self, Colin, uh, which had the turret takedown, the complete set of blind bags, the Brute Warrior, the Elite Ultra, the Flood Hunter drop pod, and also a gummy of Captain Cutter. Yeah. Yeah. 
and reviews of a lot of that stuff have been shot and they will be coming out in the next couple of weeks at time of recording so it may very well be it they're out there for you to check out um, and alongside that I actually just got a package today that had um, another Brute Warrior, another two Elite Ultras, um, a Dutch versus Predator pack, a yeah. Alien Queen set, a bunch of Jurassic stuff and then three of the Marine Customizer pack. So I have got an absolute ton of stuff this month. Uh, my wallet is stinging, <laughs> and I cannot afford to spend any more money in 2020. So Nobody gets Christmas presents. Yeah, nobody this year. Mum, Dad, if you're listening, my love is going to have to be enough, because you ain't getting anything else. Just give um, a big hug. Yeah. So yeah, so I bought a lot of stuff. Also, fairly recently, shot some Halloween Mega Constructs photos, and, oh. and they will be coming out on my Twitter very soon. Very nice. All right, and then Gabe. So speaking of Halloween, Gabe, you always do some some spooky figures, don't you? Yes, I do. Yep, I'm working right now. I'm working on um, two. I I kind of want to do a third one, but it just depends on you know my schedule and seeing how the first two go. Um, but besides that, I, I myself, I got two of the UNSC Spartan Armor Packs, which we're going to talk about a little later. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited about those. I also managed to get a few more of the Series 1 Halo Infinite Blind Packs, mm -hmm. so I got some additional custom fodder. Um, outside of that, I've been trying not to spend so much, just because... <laughs> Just because there are, like, even with the Pelican, I really, really want to get it, but I haven't, and I'm debating still on justifying to myself that I need it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably get it eventually, but right now, I'm kind of just, you know, I'm just kind of sitting in limbo with it. I mean, you need it, um, but when... when yeah, uh... I, I really do want it. Yeah. But I mean, for for now, I'm just kind of gathering the smaller sets, like the armor packs and things. I'm I'm very jealous of Tom getting all those Marines. That's the one thing I'm still, still hopefully going to get sooner rather than later. But it's worth yeah, it. I'm working on working it's worth on every working on figures. Uh, I I bet it is. <laughs> I'm just working on figures as normal. Cool. Um, got a lot of uh, new prototype stuff coming up in the in the coming weeks that I think you all might enjoy. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Make, make sure to take a look. Well, hopefully, you know, by the time this edit gets out there, then we can show some of those, those fancy pictures of, of your uh, figures. That'll be fun. Yeah. That'd be I awesome. was going to jump in and say, and this is probably something that I should have just messaged you off of show. But if you want me to do any spooky edits for your photos for Halloween, let me know and we can drop some like mist in Ooh, maybe yeah. put some cobwebs in i'm a, i absolutely stuff. will i will definitely message you about that that would be an awesome idea sounds good it's halloween well by the time this drops halloween's either just happening soon or it happened so we'll try to get this <laughs> <Yeah>. out before <laughs> yeah. um, enjoy everybody right. depending how oh. lazy i've been so I have a couple things. I'll, I'll dive into my stuff. Um, so non-building related, but Halo related, I, ju I did finish Shadows of Reach. Um, and highly recommend that if you are interested in it, pick it up. It, it does play directly into, well, it's after Halo 5, after Halo Wars 2, um, and it is before Halo Infinite, a little ways before, but it's still... In, it fills in a lot of gaps in between there, so lots lots of interesting stuff. Definitely check that out. Some some good stuff. I did grab the Walmart edition, so I haven't finished that um, the extra bonus story yet, but that does have some interesting things to say about our enemies, I believe. So I'll be reading that that shortly. Um, I had a proud dad moment when my son decided to uh, want to be a Halo uh, fit person for Halloween. And yes. that was completely <laughs> oh, unlike. Nice. I didn't. Wait, wait, well, who who did he go well, with? Well, so I, I, it wasn't like I, it wasn't Look. pushing it on him. You know, like I get I get him I get some Halo stuff, and he plays with the figures. You know, some of the figures that I give him, and we yeah. put some sets together. And then um, he's been really. He I gave him a Revenant a Revenant Hunter recently. Um, you know the red one, and he's yeah. like super into yeah. that. Like that's his main toy. It's been his main toy for the last couple weeks. Um, and then he was interested in, he, he saw my shelf 
um, and I have a bunch of Promethean Knights up there, and so he was he asked for one, and so I, I did have like an extra Promethean. Uh, I think it's called Promethean Warriors that pack with yeah. a knight, a couple crawlers, and a watcher. So I let him open that, and he's been playing playing with that anyway. So like he's been doing that, but he also does all a bunch of other toys and stuff like that. But uh, when my wife asked him what he wants to be for Halloween, he's like, uh, maybe a Halo guy or something. <laughs> <laughs> so they they were looking on, and I, I'm not you know I'm not pushing anything, letting them pick it out together. But he did, he picked out the red Mark Seven um, that they nice. had at Target. So yeah, so that's pretty rad. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And I, I will. I haven't five. I haven't told him that I have uh, the Master Chief helmet because I did pick that up from Target, the the <laughs> new one. So I'll break that on Halloween. Is that the full one or the half? The full one, yeah. Oh, it's so it's nice. Very nice. Yep. So I'll break that out, and yeah, I don't have a full suit or anything, but I have plenty of Halo shirts to wear with that. So <laughs> that should be fun. So if he's going as the Mark Seven, does that mean you have an excuse to pick up the Nerf gun? Yeah, well, we haven't. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, he's six, and we're not quite there yet. So we'll we'll get there eventually. I probably will grab that anyway and just tuck it away in the closet for when it's time. <laughs> I was gonna I was it's gonna say big. you could get in and say, oh yeah, it's for you. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I have some other props like an energy sword and a needler prop and some stuff like that. So we'll break that all out in due time. But excited! I think it was fun. You know, plus we'll have that yeah. costume for the other two. When they grow into it, you know, so we'll always have a Spartan in this household for Halloween, which would be good. <laughs> Amen. The, let's see, what else have I been doing on the building front? Oh, I did grab a se- second Pelican um, because uh, I needed that ex- that other hunter. And I needed that hunter for my chess set because I've been finally working on it. And I did complete a banished set. Um, and I did send a picture to you guys, so hopefully you can some flash that and edit here but i'm still i still need to get so what i'm going to do is i'm doing banished versus unsc and try to do infinite theme so i'm trying to get as many infinite figures as i can to flesh out my um chest set on the other side of the board but i still need i need some odsts um some green odsts and there's not many of them out there there is from the uh what is it called like odst troop pack i believe there there are uh, it's like a dutch like the first dutch we got and then another odst and a couple drones yeah and then there is a green one from the challenger blind bags way back in the day and those things on ebay are like 30 bucks a pop or something like that so (laughs) oh yeah they're very ridiculous um so i need to try to find another collector that's going to help me out because um, if I get those ODSTs, then I'll have like a full, you know, I'll have like the red banished on one side and then the green uh, UNSC on this side. It's gonna be pretty rad. So I'm excited to to finally finish that off. I've been teasing that. I've been working on that for literally a year and a half, or just chipping away at it or, or or ignoring it. But I'm excited to finally get that thing done. And then I want to do the rest of the sets, like a Promethean set and a Covenant, like a pre schism Covenant and post schism Covenant. I'm, I got lots of lots of plans for the rest of the the chess set so i'm excited my man's bought another pelican so he could complete his chess set (laughs) what a guy what a freaking guy (laughs) well there's you know i can do the alternate build too but uh yeah or have two pelicans that's right just have two pairs you need two to crash Um, (laughs) crash into each other um i may have just thought of a solution for you colin yeah Get a few of the Infinite Blind Bag Marine, and if you can find them on sale, get a few of the Marine Sniper and pop and swap. Oh, because does she have the ODST helmet, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yes. Wow. I think I did grab a couple extra of hers, so I'll check that out. Thank you for that idea. No I like worries. It. Um, awesome. So uh, a couple other things real quick. Just um, <coughs> I did... Uh, I'm still waiting on my uh, Masters of the Universe heroes that... Uh, I mentioned from Entertainment Earth. I don't know when they're going to come. Apparently, they're in Walmart's in um, in Canada. I think they sent them all to one Walmart. I've seen pictures where this <laughs> this one shelf is just stacked full of them. Oh um, <laughs> so I'm waiting for those to come. And then I did pick up the Point Dread set. Then it's got Panthor. I forget if I mentioned that last time, but I, I do have Battle Cat and Panthor. So I'm excited about that. All right. Why don't we dive into the main topic of the show? And we have... It's figure talk. Like we're we're doing just a, a teeny bit of a set here because we do get a buildable pelican in the new blind bags, and then uh, like I said, we'll cover off a little bit on Chief's helmet, the the um, the shelf piece that they included in this uh, first wave. But we want to dive into the 
blind bags first because uh, these have been out there for a while it's just taking a little bit for us all to acquire the full set so we can all talk about them and we're going to just toss it around we're each going to take two and and kind of go around the horn here and uh, we, we've done previews on this we've we've hinted at certain things here and there there might even be a video out there of the full um, set out there by the time this drops but we do want to do at least a full um, like conversation and talk and talk a little bit more in, in depth and analysis yeah. of yeah. the series in depth about yeah. this stuff. Um, so why don't we start? We'll just go down the we'll go down the number line um, and we'll include the numbers of all the blind bags in the notes of uh, of the video. But we'll start with seven, and that's the Goonier. And Gabe wants to talk about this Goonier. I do, I do. Um, per- one of the particular things that I actually really enjoy about this figure is that it's on a female torso. Yeah. yeah. So it uses the aerosol chest and back, which is the same pieces that were used in Cat or the Active Camo and Black aerosol Spartans. But, um, I, d- I just think it's nice getting more of the female torsos mm-hmm. or, or the female molds, um, from Mega Constructs. But, uh, yeah, it's the... Goomnir helmet nice. is a entirely new mold, or at least the <laughs> Halo Reach variant is an entirely new mold from Mega Constructs this year in their Halo Infinite wave. Um, I think there's three or four different variants, yep. but this yellow one there's a lot. is it's a really, really nice. Um, I it's a really nice figure. It comes with the purple carbine, which we haven't actually seen a carbine in a long time. Like it's in been a, a while since we had a carbine. Mo- yeah, oh, yeah. It's That's been a, a while. Point. It's been a. It's <laughs> it's been a pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's been a pretty long time, but um, the white for the forearms and the lower legs on this figure actually are modeled. They have a little bit of like speckling in their mold, sort of how they do with the green bricks for like uh, UNSC vehicles. Is it an? So is it like an off white? Of, uh, or like I almost I picture it as more of a. Gray, yeah, it's not. Like it's not color. like a. Uh, it's not like a. It's not a bright white. It's more like a grayish, like off-white mm-hmm. color. But I think that's just to add like opacity and and to make sure that like the speckling that they put in mixes in a little yeah. more. But it contrasts really well against the yellow. I, I think it's a solid figure. Yeah. It's one of my favorite of the series, probably. Are your shoulder pads loose too? My shoulder pads are loose. Yep. Yeah. Shoulder pads are extremely loose. I, I'm not sure yep, if that's same. just a. I don't know if that's because of the mold or if it's because these blind packs are relative. They're just so relatively new. Um, I'm not sure, but yeah, I have seen that be a, a bit of an issue with a few of my other friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably the mold of the shoulder pad itself. That's, that's my guess. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. But um, yeah, overall, I think the the figure itself yeah. is, is rock solid. I really, you know. There's a lot of Goonirs in Infinite in these sets. <laughs> Too many. But I'm into it. That's true. I'm totally into it. I, give me more Goonirs. I mean, we probably have enough, yeah. actually. Don't give me any more Goonirs. <laughs> but I, I'm all about this this uh, helmet and this this armor set. So very happy. Do you guys have any other thoughts, uh, Tom or Matt? I really do like the white. I guess not the off the the off white colors of the arms and the the th- uh, lower portion of the boots. I guess. It's mm-hmm. a very nice little kind of a cream color to them. So it's, it's a color it's a that nice you'd like color. paint your bedroom. I feel like. Yeah, exactly. It's like a, a Swiss coffee. Yeah, exactly. The one thing I would suggest is that I mean, it's a really, really bright yellow. Yeah. So for me personally, I'd probably like black mm-hmm. wash it real light. Just put a black wash on, just so you can actually see the mold itself yeah. well, a little well, more. You guys but... know how I feel about yellow Spartans running into battle. <laughs> I, I don't. Ooh. Tom, moving to you. I, uh, yeah, I thought that this color yellow was a little bit more diffused, and I said that in my review. I thought it wasn't as garish as some of the other colors of yellow we've got. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I did also want to say I think that the not white bits of armor that everyone's gushing about <laughs> are the same color as the off-white bits on the purple spartan in the spartan free customizer pack and um, yes i'm fairly sure they're the same i think you're right them. well this spartan and we've gotten it already from the mark 7 halo heroes but this is really telling us that we're, we're going to be able to customize our armor quite a bit i feel like in infinite yeah um so I'm, I'm excited to see what those customizations finally are but i bet you like the you know this off-white color on his on his visor is probably going to be something that you can customize 
um, and maybe even that yeah. stripe on there. It could be, yeah, lots of options I feel like are, are ahead for us. So we're excited to see that. Matt, why don't we toss it over to you for the Mark 7? It's, it's it's actually pretty good. So when I first saw it, I wasn't a, a huge fan of the blue. And obviously, it's always that same thing. And I know Colin mentioned it in the last episode where he said, you see it on the page and you're like, yeah, it's okay. And then when you get it in hand, you're like, you know, it really kind of works. Right. Um, so this blue, I mean, it's the standard Mark 7 design that we've had going forward, especially from the Halo Heroes. So the, the design isn't the same, but the blue is a nice... Nice shade of blue, and I really yeah. appreciate it. This guy comes with a brute shot, so we actually do get a brute shot, and it's not the the not brute shot weapon. Um, <laughs> one of the, the things not, I noticed that's now the shock rifle, right? We've we've learned that. Yes. Thing. Oh, yeah, the shock rifle. I'm still calling it not brute shot. <laughs> <laughs> shock rifle. That's pretty good. Um, the brute shot that comes with this figure, the blade or like the portion that you would like cut somebody with at the bottom mm-hmm. has a bit of a jagged edge to it so there's like dings and oh uh, yeah little bits of unless i just dropped mine and it got all dinged up <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no that, that's in the mold yeah so it's got a nice little <laughs> bunch of little dings and stuff like that which kind of adds a little bit to it um which is kind of nice to see especially on this level of the the blind bags you know not all lot of detail goes into the weapon so it's nice to see that uh, this is going in, so I I really appreciate this figure. I like the I like the color of his visor. I love the blue. Um, the helmet does look like it's a shade darker blue, and it yeah, just might be I mine, no, but I it's just that. a little bit, yeah. So mm-hmm. anyway, I but I I love the Mark Seven design, so uh, I'm glad that we got a nice uh, color that's not too extreme, but just kind of it looks like uh, Carter from Noble Team. Yeah, color. that's a good that's yeah. a good comparison. Do you think we're gonna get brute shot in Infinite? Like that'd be pretty rad, right? Like we get, we... Mm-hmm, for sure. If we did, I don't think it would be the same. I think it would be very different mm. from what we remember the brute shot as being. Oh, yeah. like the way it shoots itself in the game. You mean? Yeah, it it seems like a common theme, like with the carbine and pulse carbine, mm-hmm. or the shotgun and the bulldog, or the mauler and the mangler. Mm. I, I I just think if they bring back brute shot, it'll be think that it'll, it'll be pretty different yeah. but i hope it makes a return i loved it in halo 2 it'll probably be i was thinking about this the other day like in halo wars 2 you don't really see a lot of the weaponry the brutes use like obviously right. um Voridus and Travium, um they've got very very specific weapons when you see them in that mm, cut scene mm-hmm. but i was kind of thinking about it and i was like to all extensive purposes the banished on the arc could have had things like the mangala and we just never see them using them like mm-hmm. there's absolutely no reason why they couldn't have had them so i'm hoping that that's true all of the techs gonna merge across in infinite yeah definitely mm-hmm. yeah i think they just have like plasma rifles when you get them in the the grunt unit um yeah gabe what do you think about the mark sevens how are you feeling about these S- still one of my absolute favorite armors favorite figures ever nice um, that's great it's high praise what, what i w- i mean something i i would like to say is that the color for it i'm pretty sure is comparable to that of i'm not sure how familiar you are with this but um series five blind packs had a figure which was a cobalt marine yeah nice. and i'm pretty sure that the blue used on this figure is almost identical to that it's like a cobalt blue it's really yeah. really nice it's almost metallic but that's like the i, I really blue, like the right? figure cobalt it's blue i got if i have another yeah. kid i'm gonna name him cobalt blue <laughs> <laughs> oh boy well i mean you know velociraptor <laughs> uh, I'm speaking so of tired. Velociraptors, it took me a second to think of that. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Tom. Any other thoughts on the seven before we move on? Um, I'll be honest. I prefer the heroes one purely because I like darker colors anyway on most Spartans. Yeah, obviously they're more realistic. Um, and I put the Mark Seven between two of the Stormbound ODSTs mm-hmm. earlier, and it is like the sexiest combo of Spartan and ODST action <laughs> I've ever seen. Nice. So I don't think any Mark 7 going to top that now. <laughs> I bet that no, would be no. pretty nice. All right, let's move on to the, let's see, Camo Chief. Matt, you're going to come That's with Camo me. Chief too. Yeah, I'm going to be ready going right after the other. Mm. Uh, camo Chief. Uh, you know, actually, to be honest, some of the Camo figures that you get in the past, they've always kind of had this yellow tinge. Not a yellow, but kind of a more dirty grimy look to it the the one i have the one that i got and i got 
three total from the blind bag series. So I got quite a swath of them. Nice. But they have well, yeah, all yeah. been so crystal clear. Yeah. It's it's amazing. And uh, it's, it's, it's just so awesome. So um, the only thing I'll say about this figure is I don't know why he came with a battle rifle. I would mm-hmm. have preferred that he had come with his traditional assault rifle so that, yeah. of course, in every set that Chief's been in, he's been paired with his assault rifle. So it would have been nice to have an invisible assault rifle. Oh, so that, you yeah, because then you could switch, swap them out. Mm-hmm. exactly if i'm gonna make like a stop motion i don't want to have to swap him out you know so like oh he has to pick up uh, a battle rifle before he can pick up his active camo um, right right mm-hmm. but <laughs> but same same basic mold just a really clear crisp figure um i'm really impressed with it so i i love it you know i think i'm i'm gonna try to use him in some stop motion right. uh hopefully i can get to it in some time but yeah no i'm very impressed with it uh again, have you done active camo powerful. stuff I did early on in a couple of videos that I probably never put on YouTube, but back in the day uh-huh. when I was just kind of fiddling with it. Um, and that was back when it was the uh, Gen 1 figures. So okay. um, it was probably a little easier than having each segment of the armor. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. I'll see what I can do. Um, I'll see. If, it, if, if you never see it, it never worked out then. <laughs> <laughs> right. His shoulder pads are also a little loose on mine. Let me see on mine. I don't no, know. mine are. Uh, his left shoulder pad's a l- okay. little loose. So there's a little but quality right control or well. something up with the mold on these. But overall, it looks very nice. Tommy, you a camo guy? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it it just doesn't really do anything for me because I always find uh, after a few months, these figures tend to get a bit brittle and their hands yeah. especially are like notorious at least in my collection for snapping yeah. so i'm always just like oh, i'll probably never touch it again right why do you so, think that's like that um it's it's all to do with plastic transparent plastic has got much less resilience than colored plastic really yeah because that's why it yellows so badly as well because it's if you have um any exposure to sunlight for example transparent plastic will color a lot worse than something mm. else um, and one thing to look hmm. out for, actually, white plastic's really bad for sun damage as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. This feels like a good place for me to ask this question. Why do they call them gummies? Um, It's, it's more a fan-made-up <laughs> term. To Did you ask cool. why, do they call, why do they call them or why don't no, they call them? No, why do they? Because yeah. I know like when I was starting... Gummies, yeah, go ahead. gummies originates from the... Um, multicolor translucent yeah. figures being comparable to like gummy bears. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're called gummies yeah. because they look like gummy candy. And yeah, it became huh. a term as well because back in back when there was old articulation and they first introduced the idea of doing it, I think Gable know hmm. for sure it was either series seven or one of the ones just after. Um, it was actually the first gummy figures were in series um, five. Oh, geez. There was a brown Mark IV, a red Mark IV, and a blue Mark IV. There was three options wow. you could get. Wow, yeah. That's blowing my mind because I was just thinking of the one with the Mountain Dew Elite, that wave. Yeah, that was series six. Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. So th- th- they kind of introduced multiple different ones at the same time, and then gummies just stuck. So what do you think chief tastes like is he cherry like <clears throat> what, what would clear I think chief would want to answer this question <laughs> he's mint mint okay i'm into that uh, cookies and cream mint <laughs> pure right, let's, hard testosterone <laughs> oh, let's no. move on to the marine oh, no. tom you want to talk about this marine because you hate his knee pads are you sure you trust me talking now um yeah so we don't we never marine, did marine i go back and forth on it um i think i, w- I want to preempt it by saying very broadly with the infinite line we've been very lucky at how many marines we've got yeah. um, and the fact that we're continuing to get them like the platoon pack that's coming out looks flawless mm-hmm. um but i have a slight problem well two slight problems with this marine purely because it's the easiest way for people to get multiples of marines and it has elements which make it harder to use with things like the marine cost uh gear pack i keep mm-hmm. calling it a customizer pack um um and the the two main things are firstly the fact that like you say i have an issue with the knee pads 
this is the only marine in the entire infinite line where the knee pads aren't painted they're just green like the pants um oh my god the americanisms are taking over i said pants not trousers um <laughs> <laughs> and Converting they in. kind of like they just blend Come into the colours um, and it doesn't look that bad in person but it's just noticeable when he's displayed with other marine figures mm-hmm. you can just tell it it's not got the same level of detail um, and the second thing is the fact that they chose to give this mm. one the sleeves without any shoulder mounts because what that means is if you get a lot of these marines you can't use them with something like the Marine Customizer Pack to put different shoulder plates on. And I think it's a shame um, because it really limits the amount of interplayability you get with this and some of the other products in the line. So in that regard, it is frustrating for me. Um, But I also appreciate that I probably sound like a spoiled child (laughs) considering how many other ways we have to get Marines. And I mean, if like this is that big a problem, I can quite easily just get a few more of Recon Getaway for the price it is. So it's not really an issue per se. I just don't quite understand the logic behind it. Sure. He's just a level one Marine, you know? (laughs) He's a recruit. His, you know... His <laughs> high level. He's playing too much division orange. again. He hasn't gotten his purple knee pads yet. That's the problem. <laughs> um, Halo Infinite MMO confirmed. Right, Gabe. Tell me about your love for Marines. Well, the <laughs> I mean, I have a love for them, and I also have a hate for them because I can't find the Marine gear pack. Oh, so uh, <laughs> I have been forced. That's I have is. been forced to buying a whole bunch of the Marines from from the Infinite. Uh, Series one pack. Are you? What do you think of these helmets um, though? Like, are you gonna do some stuff with these helmets from a customization standpoint? Absolutely. I so marine. <laughs> I finally get to talk about my job and why I love it. Um, <laughs> the chest piece. The chest piece on this marine is actually the base armor piece that is used in Reach across all AA pilots, marines, soldiers. Which, by the way, the Halo Reach. Marines are technically the soldiers of Reach, and they're also used on ODST Bullfrogs. Okay. So at the moment, my first immediate custom plan with a new Infinite Marine is to make an ODST Bullfrog from Halo Reach. Oh. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, buddy. But yeah, I mean, the Marines in this series... The other thing that I love about the Marines in this series is the assault rifle. I'm glad that it's a cheap, easy, yeah. consistent way that to get the assault mm-hmm. rifle mold. Because before this, I think it's the chief in the duo pack and the recon Spartan and the chief in the warthog. So I'm finally, you know, I'm glad that there's a way to get lots of the assault rifles because I love the new assault rifle mold. Mm-hmm. Matt, any other thoughts on Marines? Yeah, actually, you know, to be honest, I'm actually not a huge fan of the shoulder pads on the Marines. So oh. because I think they just look a little too bulky and i'll say that my probably my most favorite thing to come out of this new line has been the marines and obviously they are a little taller so that's kind of a drawback but yeah i don't necessarily need them to be as bulky as a spartan and so that kind of compensates for them being a little taller so they just don't feel like they're these massive tanks owning the battlefield so yeah i'm okay with them not including the shoulder pads so i i kind of I'm, i'm indifferent to it you know most of them uh, I think I mentioned the Marine snipers. I took the shoulder pads off because I felt like they were just made made the snipers look just huge. Um, mm-hmm. So I took those off. But so I'm not a huge disappointed or I'm kind of indifferent to it. But uh, I do agree with Tom. It It is kind of sad that the, the knee pads aren't painted. But I think uh, it's an easy fix if you really want to just kind of paint those out. And I think yeah. it just adds a little level of customization that if you want, you could just add a, a little bit so it looks like he has scuffed up knee pads. So Well, I like that you can turn his feet on backwards so that it looks like he's just silly on the dance floor. <laughs> you really want to make this guy a level one, don't you? He's wearing his boots the wrong way. <laughs> Next, you're going to say he's got his helmet attached to the bottom of one leg. We can make that happen. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about the, ooh, the grunt, the gorgeous grunt. Gabe, take this one. Yes. So this figure in particular, I have been begging for since like 2013. Because in 2012, with the release of Halo 4, Mega gave us the old articulation Storm Grunt and the old articulation Imperial. 
And then I think around 20, what, 2015 mm -hmm. is when the new articulation grunts came out. And for some reason, it's only ever been Storm grunts yeah. or Halo 3 grunts. Yeah. And then recently, I guess, the Halo Reach style Halo 2 anniversary grunts. But for some reason, it's like every other version of the grunt from Halo 4 was completely forgotten about. So finally, Infinite gives it the push that it needed and now we have an official grunt imperial forward slash halo infinite grunt um this one comes in orange with two translucent blue plasma grenades which is something they used to do a lot and they stopped doing so i'm actually kind of uh, i'm kind of glad that um you know comparatively like with the old style energy sword they're also bringing back translucent grenades mm -hmm. Uh, I, I just like that little feature. Yeah. But on the sides of the methane tank, there's actually two small round stud pieces, mm -hmm. I guess, to emulate like the tank itself. But um, it does still use the old style head, which gives it this very stumpy, no neck <laughs> look. Yeah. I kind of wish they would have just gone just a little bit further and just made a a helmet that could already be used on the grunt's head mold but i mean for what it is and for sake of the fact that i'm just glad i have the grunt mold now it's a solid figure um the shell actually is different from most grunts it doesn't connect yeah. under the arm mm -hmm. it's just it, you know it just kind of wraps under there at a point but it doesn't actually connect which is I'm not sure if that was a design choice in order to make it easier to remove mm -hmm. or, or what the reason for that was, but it, it looks good to me. But yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it, and I've already amassed, I think I've got nine of these runs. Holy <laughs> smokes. I think... I've got I've got plans for them. So are they all <laughs> don't worry. Um, built? When you open them, I'm forgetting if this was built or not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My, my, the the grunts are always built. Okay, and that's good because the grunts just kill your figure fingers to try to put these things <laughs> that's together. That's true. Putting mm -hmm. their little legs on. Yeah, they just destroy your fingers with all these little sharp edges that yeah. they have. So I'm glad that they're given to us, giving them to us built because that uh, makes my fingers much happier. I agree. Yeah, Tom, any other thoughts on the grunt? I'm going to go from being really pathetic and moaning about knee pads. To... <laughs> <laughs> I'm choking, apparently. Um, to praising the fact that this is the same color orange as the grunt in recon getaway because it would have been very similar like easy for them to be a slightly different shade because that mm -hmm. happens all the time so the fact that they match just looks so good i mean yeah i've got one of them stood in the middle of a group of three of the recon get getaway grunts and it just looks so good yeah I didn't actually notice that. Mm -hmm. are, are they are the same yeah. color? Oh, that's awesome! That'll make, that'll make for some really convenient Halo Infinite like setup pictures <laughs> yeah. since they have <laughs> both art styles. That'll help with the consistency at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this also yeah. isn't even the first Imperial grunt that Infinite we've seen in the Infinite Wave. Mm -hmm. There was the red Imperial grunt that came with the AA turret. Yeah, yeah. With the a yeah. yeah. So it's nice to see a variety of different turret, colors. And, so that's like that's that kind of variety is really kind of neat, especially if you're army building so you're not going to have you know a bunch of just one color especially mm -hmm. with yeah. the covenant and if you are army are building banished. note that that red version is getting re-released in the ghost that's coming out next year Ooh, that's right oh right yeah very nice awesome. all right let's move on I, i'm a fan of the grunt as well i um yeah i i, I think in general i think one of the, when i started collecting grunts were kind of rare for some reason at that time i think i think it was end of 2018 early 2019 i believe um and I, I couldn't track many down they may not have been blind bags but now there's lots of grunts and they're all over the place and um <laughs> it, it's good because you need them to to really make a complete covenant or banished army because they're they're the cannon fodder right there there's lots of them in the, in the army and uh they just get mowed down by the Spartans. <laughs> 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 yep. They're just right, bullet sponges. They pretty much. Well, not sponges. They're just bullet. Yeah. They, just, they die <laughs> they're immediately. Like, they're they're like the droids nice. of Star Wars. Yes. Exactly. They overwhelm Roger, you. Roger. Exactly. Speaking of bullet sponges, though, the elite that you get 
is this is one of my favorite elites that yeah. we've, I've seen in a long time. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I feel like when we did our preview, we were a lot harsher on this wave, and now <laughs> uh, to Matt's point, you know, it's like this is actually a really good wave, and if you want an elite, <laughs> get this one because it's you know it's the proper purple color. You know, if you're a fan of the Covenant, and it has an energy sword, which is a, a fantastic um, transparent blue. And, um, you know, the mandible co- covers on the helmet are just so good. And you can you can do many things with this. If you want to go, you know, Gabe's route and just do a little bit of touch-up and a little bit of um, paint coloring, you can do that pretty easily, I feel like. Um, this guy is this guy's really nice. So I, I, I would say he's probably one of the favorites of, of the entire line, just how classic a look he has. Matt, what do you think about this thing? I love him. So I like the idea that we're keeping with the same armor style and then just doing variations of color. So obviously in the recon getaway, you have the same kind of style, but it's a darker blue. And I mm-hmm. like that they included the same black under uh, undersuit, under armor. And yeah. then you have the, the gray flesh tone of the elite. So just little touches like this that kind of uh, link it together and connect them is excellent so um the energy sword is cool it's interesting that we're going back to um i would say the halo 5 energy sword design so it's mm-hmm. it's kind of neat to see infinite kind of the especially the mega constructs that's kind of straddled the line between bringing in a little bit of the old and mixing it in with the new so you're kind of having a variety of all sorts of different weapons and variations uh so i'm happy to see him i think i've collected the most of this guy so i think i have four of him nice so yeah so i'm very happy it's very nice to have this energy sword feels like and i don't know there's probably little tweaks to energy swords but this feels like the energy sword that the display piece that you get the big buildable display sword it feels like that similar it's modeled after that similar style of energy Mm -hmm. sword it's more angular Mm-hmm. Did everyone else's have the marble effect on it, where it's got like? One yeah, I, I was going to mention yep. this this energy sword in this series is uh, it is marble it's with dark blue beautiful. or white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very nice. Any other thoughts, Tom? You want to chime in on? No, that's it. Just the cool. sword. And, yeah. Yeah. Good color purple. Yeah, Gabe. What yeah, are you going to do with this thing? Are you, are you going to use this as a base um, base figure? That's probably about all I'll use it for. Honestly, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm kind of getting a little burnt out on Halo 3 Combat Elites because mm-hmm. we had the green one, then we had the blue one, then we had a second blue one, now we have a purple one, there's also the red one. Yeah. We're already up to five different colors of a Combat Elite. It was a green which one is, too, right? Uh, yeah, that was the first yeah. one, the green one from a, from a couple series back. Uh, you know, I agree with majority of what everybody said. Um, it's a really nice mold. The color, the color actually is really pretty. It looks purple, and then you take it out of the bag, and it's almost like an indigo color. Yeah. It's a nice. It's it's a really pretty shade. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm so happy that they did a black undersuit. Yeah. Like Matt said, that that's probably my favorite thing. I was getting. It's so frustrating trying to do elite customs, and then you have like tan skin or blue skin but i'm so happy that they went with black because it makes it so much easier and it looks really good with the purple totally agree all right we are on to the the pilot who we still don't know his name he's still the pilot but he is in holographic form tom talk about this thing his name's bro hammer um no (laughs) it's oscar (laughs) meyer (laughs) so um my boy chief's best friend bro bro h um he is a very cool figure in his holographic form um i i don't know i kind of feel like there's something more appealing about having characters like say for example cutter as a hologram because you can picture him communicating with other ships Mm -hmm. um but actually having the pilot as a holographic figure really hit me in the feels because whenever i look at this figure i'm taken back to the discover hope trailer and the moment where he's having the holographic conversation with his daughter, yeah. and I can almost picture this being uh, what yeah. she could see at the other end. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, in that regard, it's a really nice kind of way to. <laughs> Good lord, you just made this sentimental as hell. <laughs> it's what <laughs> My I do. Gosh. It's, it's why I'm here, you know? Um, so I think it's a really nice way of kind of paying homage to that trailer. Um, and I also just think it's a nice way for people to get this figure. Um, a lot cheaper because obviously if you're somebody with insane talent like Gabe 
then you could easily come on guys come on. <laughs> you could <laughs> easily repaint this and have yourself a pilot without having to buy the biggest set of the wave yeah. so yeah i like yeah, that. absolutely could yeah that's a good point what do you think so i feel like i mentioned this on the pelican show but his suspenders like they're uneven yeah. and it bothers me <laughs> I think they're supposed to be like that, kind of showing yeah. a little bit more of a disheveled pilot. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, I uh, so I can tell you the technical reason for that. It's because they're a Call of Duty piece. And yeah. the way that the Call of Duty torsos work is slightly different because they have a um, different style lip on the legs than they do on the bottom of the torsos mm -hmm. because obviously they have the tack belt in the middle that connects it together. So this is designed to have essentially a in and out piece connecting, whereas the halo figures are just in and in. So the legs have mm. got the same flat piece as the torsos. Um, so that means it doesn't quite bite. So it's not fully secured in place. It is kind of just sitting there wedged between those two pieces. Right. So if you were to put it on something like a cod figure, um, like a good example, uh, I don't know his name. I always think of him as Torbjorn from Overwatch because he looks really similar. Um, but there's a COD Heroes figure that comes with the suspenders on from Black Ops 4. And his are like perfectly balanced because they were designed for him. Gotcha. Um, so it's probably more just because they're reusing those pieces. Um, but I, I think they're nice, you know. I, I remember saying when the trailer came out, I think on one of our shows, I said, if Mega do the pilot, I really hope they use that suspender piece. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. So I'm glad they did because I think it looks really cool. And like Matt said, it just lends more to his appearance in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Is this the sidekick gun as well? Uh, yes. yes. Oh, the sidekick, yeah. And Although that's I, controversial. Dude, I want to say it doesn't look like a sidekick. It looks like a 1911. Yep. In reference to the to the sidekick, I mean, you have to think at that scale, how different can you make something that small yeah. look? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the dif differentiating a 1911 to a sidekick Magnum from, from Halo would be extremely hard. But I mean... I don't know. I kind of look at it, and it just—it looks like one of those little Lego guns. It's too small. It should be a little bit bigger. I just—I would have mm -hmm. just stuck with the regular Magnum. Well, if, if you look—if you look at the the Halo Infinite gameplay trailer, the gun itself, the sidekick, is actually pretty small. I mean, compared to the Magnum, I'd say it's a smaller gun canonically. So that's just kind of my opinion. But really cool thing about the uh, um, pilot here is that if you shine a light in the back. It really kind of illuminates and looks really cool. So if you do grab this figure, just shine a light in the back, you know, with something like your phone, <laughs> just Ooh, to like kind that. of light him up. Yeah, I might do a, do a picture of that, Tom. Have a picture of a light shining in the back so he's like, oh, he no, might look like no, the librarian. No, he I might look like the librarian, though. That's what it is. Oh. Bro Hammer's the librarian. Oh, <laughs> <Disguise>. <laughs> yeah, the librarian Bro, grew a bro bit. Barian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about this um, Pelican real quick. I did. I think I talked about it a little bit already um, in, in terms of the comparison to the building box um, f Pelican that you can build. So this thing is smaller, but it's more intricate, and I, I do like it. I, I like that. Um, I like the look of it. I think that you know the the build is you know it's simple, but it's but it's well done. And it, it clearly resembles a pelican. You know, if you saw this thing randomly on a shelf, you know, from far away, you'd be like, oh, that's a cute little pelican. That's cool. Um, th my only my only thing with these micros, and I, I like these, but I want to pair them with other th other vehicles yeah. that are in the same scale. And it's you're just not going to be able to get a warthog that is scaled, you know, to the same size of this. So yeah. I'm sure somebody's done it where it's like a micro build of all of the vehicles that are that are up to scale you'd probably have to start with the warthog and then go up from there but um that that's my only thing from like like it's a cool little piece but i wouldn't really pair it with anything else maybe the other besides the um you know the the pilot and and the chief you know on, on a display piece or just you know with the whole wave just to show that hey i've completed this this, this full blind bag wave but mm -hmm. in terms of sh you know i probably wouldn't put it next to you know a, a full warthog because that's just going to look weird right that's going to look yeah. a little awkward but what well, um, it's not even to scale with the infinity is it no there's no not yeah no way yeah. too big <laughs> oh goodness no. <laughs> yeah. yeah so you can't even do that i'm just gonna say mm -hmm. 
Gabe, what do you think about these, uh, the little pelican? Um, actually, for the first few series that they did this, I was I didn't get the micro fleet vehicles. I really wasn't that interested in them. Mm-hmm. I've since gone back and gotten them because the obsessor in me <laughs> needed to complete the series. Right. But uh, the pe- I mean, the pelican itself is really cool. I do like that they retain the ability to pivot all four both of en- both of the engines and both of the wings i think it's really mm-hmm. cool that they figured out a way to build something that small but also have that much detail packed into yeah, exactly. it yeah um this is a, you know props to the create to the creative team on that one yeah but yeah it's a it's a solid little thing i think it's interesting because like a callback to all the past series is that usually the active camo figure has always been the ultra rare yeah. And now in this series, Chief is a common. Yeah, that is weird. Like, you can just get active camo Chief out the wazoo, and now the Pelican is an ultra rare. Mm-hmm. Which I think is interesting, because if you get a Pelican, I feel like it's pretty easy to pick it up, and when you feel a bunch of pieces, you're like, ah, wow, look at that, it's Pelican. Right, right. Yeah. But I mean, you know, for what it is, yeah, I like the Pelican. I, I, I think it's a solid little collectible. How many closing thoughts before we move on to the next set? Yeah, um, active camo Chief being common is clearly because Halsey clones him in Halo Infinite. Man. <laughs> what? They, well, she does that in Shadows of Reach, so you gotta pick up the book. <laughs> I wasn't gonna mention it. Spoilers! <laughs> That's why they're going to Reach. They had a bunch of chiefs on ice down there. <laughs> uh-huh. Along the way, they rescue Noble Six from the cave. They find George in the ruins of New Alexandria. It's yeah. a whole lot of in there too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, don't Johnson even gets laid. don't even bring up my man. <laughs> Jeez. <George. laughs> oh boy. And John's real name is actually Django. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the UNSC Spartan armor pack. And Gabe, I'm going to give you the the lead on this one. This thing, there's I mean, both of these packs, the Marine gear pack and the armor pack. Um, there's just a lot of stuff in these things. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot. So starting off with the UNSC Spartan Armor Pack, uh, it comes with 106 pieces, Ooh. and labeled on the box it does say it has 30 plus accessories, yeah. which is absolutely true. I think it comes with three figures, which out of the package it comes with a Recon Spartan in gray as the primary and yellow for the secondary, a Grenadier Spartan, which is yellow for the primary and gray for the secondary, or Steelers colors. Shout out to <laughs> Halo Fan for Life. And then it comes with a Banished Brute Warrior in silver, and um, it's kind of like a brown, like a brown color. Mm-hmm. But just talking about the first three figures, two very interesting things I want to note is that on the Grenadier, the grenades on his chest and belt are a metallic blue. Yeah. Which is very, it's a very striking metallic blue. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. And he has a pink, a metallic, almost like a, uh, like a pearl visor. Yeah, he... It, he's just, he's, it's a culmination of a lot of very interesting color choices. But it kind of works, mm-hmm. and I, I dig it. Um, and the second thing is that it's the Brute Warrior with the new chest torso, or with the chest belt and uh, helmet. Yes. Which is just the same as the one from the Hero series. Because in the two-pack, it's just a bunch of reused, recolored pieces. But I actually much prefer this design for the for the Brute Warrior. Um, additionally, in this set, it comes with a Gravity Hammer, the Assault Rifle, the Sidekick Pistol, a Mangler, and the Bulldog, Bulldog Shotgun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it comes with four frag grenades comes with four of the kind of like the muzzle flash pieces which i personally love just because they add so much action to to your setup and actually the set also comes with something extremely old like i pretty sure the last time i remember seeing this set is from like the aa gun versus rocket hog it comes with a covenant crate oh Mm -hmm. yeah it's which is such a neat it's such a yeah, and it's red to, for I assume for the banished, but it's just such a neat detail that they haven't included in years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so nice to you know get scenery pieces, especially banished ones mm-hmm. or covenant ones. But the additional armor sets that it comes with is um, they're all reach based. 
So you have things such as the Security Shoulder, Commando Shoulder, Grenadier, Mark V, Scout, and um, Gun- Gungnir yeah. Shoulders. <laughs> and then you also have an EVA Helmet, Commando Helmet, Operator Helmet, and Gungnir Helmet, as well as a Commando Chest, two Base Reach Chest Pieces, and then an additional Brigadier Chest Piece. And... All in all, I th- so I got two of these personally, one to keep sealed for now <laughs> and one to open so I could use it for pieces and things. But honestly, this is this is probably one of my top three, if not my favorite set from the Infinite. Wave. Really? Because there is so much you can do with this set. Mm. Uh, alone from the pieces that they give you just standard from this set, you can make... I saw it somewhere. It's like over 12 different combinations or something for the Spartans. Wow. Like, it's a ridiculous amount of customization options. But also, because you know, because of what I do, this gives me so many pieces to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once again, once again, we get another Gungnir. So I think that's, <laughs> what, one, two, three. That's four or five. <laughs> but I love the helmet. I mean, everything in it is is amazing um the weapon selection is awesome it does also come with interchangeable scopes yeah. for all of the weapons which are super cool so you you know you have the cog scope and the standard and then the one for the assault rifle so in halo 5 we had to choose like the full-on gun we couldn't swap out just the scope right well there were scope options and then there were scopes with gun attachments yeah mm-hmm so you mm. could have like a cog site, or you could have a cog site with a red dot. Gotcha. But it was all like prefab. Yeah. Yep. You couldn't. Yeah. I, yeah. You couldn't customize your right. guns in game. So, that's that's more of a like a Call of Duty esque yeah. thing. Yeah. I wonder if we're going that direction though with Infinite. Maybe. With all this. I. You know, honestly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind I at all. I think it'd be really that. cool to have like classes. Oh yeah. That'd be super mm. cool. Give me a super tactical ODST version of a DMR any day. Mm. that would yeah that would be something Mm -hmm. but yeah i mean all in all this set is definitely like i said it's definitely one of my top three if if not my favorite set of this year wow um i'm really pleased with everything that that comes with it and hopefully i'll be able to find a few more of these because i do i do uh i do plan to army build all these reach figures yeah they're becoming more available on walmart.com i don't know where else we can find them are these the ones that were supposed to be at dollar general is that the other ones we haven't seen no those are the other ones Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Matt, what do you think about these? Um, I had the opportunity to buy one and I went with buying another marine pack. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Traitor. only reason why I'd probably buy this set, um, is because of the box. Um mm. I, I I I like Spartans and I like having a, a plethora of Spartans. Um I'm just not a fan of the yellow. Um, I like the idea of having all the weapons. The Brute is cool. The only thing I'll say about this particular Brute is that I can't really stop motion with him because of the design of his foot. So it's really complicated and hard to try to get this guy to walk because his foot doesn't turn or give. And that's kind of a problem with the Brutes right now. Um, If you notice in any of my stop motions, the Brutes kind of only walk straight. And they never turn. Yeah. It's because of their feet don't allow them to turn. Whereas the elites, the hoof is so much smaller. Same thing with the Spartans. It allows them to turn in the stud pivot. So mm-hmm. this this guy probably, if I can't really stop motion with it. Um, so, yeah, the box is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> There's two kinds of people. Right, exactly. I, I, have, I have actually seen a lot of praise for this set. and More power to the people that love it. Um, I, I think it's a great set, especially for what you do, Gabe. Um, especially if you want to customize and you're you're looking for different armor variations. But if I, if it, you know, yeah, down yeah, to the yeah. gun, if I wanted to do this set or a Marine Gear Pack, in my opinion, the Marine Gear Pack is just leaps and bounds ahead of this set <laughs> by so much yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. whatever <laughs> yeah. Tom, how does the ahead, Tom. how does the yellow pop on photography is it too too much i don't have it <laughs> i know but 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 the yellow as you've taken yellow pic- pictures of the yellow spartans and whatnot is um, it like is it like too much the best the best example i can give you is the recon from hero series 11 mm-hmm. um I took that one out on a summer's day 
and it kind of the best word I can use is it gets a nice radiance about mm-hmm. it um, where it, it's not really transparent, but it kind of absorbs the light nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, so it looks really bright. But if I was trying to shoot something gritty, then I wouldn't want to work with it because it, it, it like you get a single little bit of light and instantly that kind of washes out all of the other color. Um, so if you're going for something where it's very vibrant and the figure is your focus. Like I can remember the shot I've got in my head. It was a portrait shot of the operator figure, um, not the recon. So it made it really pop and stand out actually. But if you were using it as part of a scene, then I think it would probably detract from the overall effect. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. My only comment on this, and I do like it. I do like having all the customization, but from a, more of like a collector standpoint, I guess. I would like, I do like it when they give you some sort of a crate to put everything in. And I know, yeah, they yeah. gave you this little, you know, Kev- covenant crate or banish crate, but um, you can't really fit much in there. So I have all these loose pieces, and you know, I can you know organize them and, and find a, a way to keep them keep them nice. But I also Life like having, well, right. But I also like having them all together. Like if I do put this on my shelf. I would like to have something that comes with the set that I can put all the pieces in and kind of pick them out rather than having to come up with my own solution yeah. for that. I was going to jump in and say I've not picked this one up, but I really like that the colors can be swapped across. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times um, you'll get like a completely different highlight color on both of them, so it won't work well, and it will still be a figure with highlights Whereas with this, I really love the fact that the grey highlights are like the same colour as the core grey armour pieces. Yeah. Because I can picture that recon in all grey armour looking like the sleekest Oni operator around. Yeah. Like, that is a figure I want to own. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah, and I love that that chess piece. It's more of a commando chess piece, right? Yeah. I really like that. Uh, I know I mentioned that. What what set was it from? The... um... Oh, I forget which one. Banshee one, yeah. I really like that figure. Cool. Well, why don't we move on to the Marine gear pack, and Tom's going to take this one. He feels uh, highly on this one. I'm going to get very excited. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I'm going to start by saying if you have any hesitations about buying this pack, it's going to be popular. So I would never usually encourage this, but stop listening to us and go (laughs) and buy this set. Yeah. Um, if you if can find it. Yeah, if you can find it. There's been so much demand for it already. Um, so I want to pretext this by saying we were talking beforehand um, on the show about Avatar, and I was explaining how, for me, I've always kind of loved the UNSC um, aesthetic, the UNSC art design, and a lot of that boils down to the way that actually humans function in the universe. And I've always found the way that BDUs, especially on the Marines, are designed is really, really interesting. Um, Because I kind of like the touristic plate carriers and all those kinds of details. Um, So this is the perfect set for somebody who is a fan of Marine armor because it gives you so much of it. But if you're like me and you've got a lot of other figures, maybe a couple of recon getaway sets, then this makes you lets you make every character feel unique. Um, And it really, really equips you with the tools to make some really, really cool combinations. Were you saying Um, that the shoulder pads don't interact with the blind bag, Marine? They don't, no. Oh, man. That is a bummer. Yep. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So the the set itself, the main focus of it is the two Marines. uh, One female Marine uh, with black hair and a male marine about the marine from the blind pack yeah. you say what like shoulder armor doesn't yes. go on him? so it's the it's the figure that hasn't got the notch for the shoulder armor it's the same as recon getaway where it's not got the notch there it's just a flat sleeve so it doesn't hang on it yeah so it, it wouldn't grip it would probably mm-hmm. fall off quite easily um and we, it, it all depends with those kinds of um arms they can be a thin enough circumference that you can still fit the shoulder plate on. But in my experience, the ones that don't have the shoulder plates, uh, like notch, if you try and force it on, it will force the piece of armor and it will break it. 
Um, I was just I was just confused because when you look at the packaging for these blind series, they have the correct shoulders that have the notch on them. Oh, whoa. It's actually on the graphic, but the figure, I literally just looked at the Marine as you said that, and you're right. Yeah. So it's, I don't know if that's a mess up or... <laughs> Huh, possible, I didn't even yeah. notice. Um, it, it just it kind of doesn't make sense when you compare it to this set because the whole idea with this set is that you get loads of shoulder armor so you can obviously oh, yeah. add it to the figures in this set but also add some variety to the figures in the other sets. So say, for example, the Warthog um, Rally Marine who's got short sleeves and the Air Assault shoulders. Don't like the Air Assault shoulders? Take them off, put the Mark V shoulders on there. You're sorted. Um, so the whole idea with this is that you get that level of interchangeability um but it doesn't stop there because you get loads and loads of different attachments for leg straps you get a knife you get a unique pouch that was used for atlas and futuristic soldiers in the cod line mm -hmm. you get normal pouches you get a smoke grenade you get a knife uh, you get weapons that have got multiple attachments, including an energy bayonet. And then the really main draw for me is the fact that you get white armor pieces, um, although they're not really white, they're kind of off gray, um, to simulate Halo Reach army troopers, which is really awesome. And you also get a pilot torso and helmet, so you can make other pilots for your pelican if you want to have the, that mm. particular pilot out of it on display, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and the thing I like is you can mix up loads of different elements, and it all has such a great degree of interchangeability. Um, so, say for example, the pilot torso... I put that piece of armor on a fully decked out Marine and then gave him a normal helmet and he looked like he was like a close quarters specialist. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that sounds awesome. so much you can experiment with here and so many pieces. It just, it, it blows my mind and it gets me really excited because for me, one of my biggest pet gripes when you have a figure who's got their face exposed, if they've got the exact same armor and stuff like that, then it just feels like the same character over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. But this really gives you all the tools to change things out. And I think ultimately, for those of us who have been asking for them to do more with the Marines, do more variety, all that kind of stuff, they've really gone above and beyond by doing something like this. Because they could have just said here's your interchangeable helmet, here's your female body mold, that's it. But taking it to this level just gives you so many options. And it, as as somebody who, generally speaking, will army build marines and exclusively marines, it's just, it's the perfect set for me. And I don't want to gush too much, because obviously marines aren't for everyone. But for me, because that's what I've always been drawn to for Halo, yes. this is literally hands down my favorite set of 2020. Yeah. This, Matt, why don't you take it? This set, I mean, I haven't gotten it in hand yet, but I did I did purchase a couple of them, so hopefully they get to me uh, fairly soon. I think the, the cool thing about this set is that it gives you, like Tom was talking about, just a variety of ways uh, to, to make this work and the cool thing is is that you also get a elite that you can build army build with and this is the yeah. same armor variation of the purple elite that we talked about in the blind series it's just red so uh, more more colors same mold um, but it's 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 nice to see such a set I mean, I think the army pack the marine pack that's coming later that has I think is it five figures yeah that one's going to be your ultimate marine army builder set but this set I'm is nice because so many. because it it has a combination of both so if you're getting a marine you're always getting an elite with it so you're never feeling like you're just going to stack one of your your forces that's going to outmatch the the covenant or the banish so it's it's nice to have that a bit of a pairing so again I'm very happy with it I I love marines you know I think there there's something about halo that is, it just adds such an amazing layer to it because you're obviously Chief, the super soldier and stuff like that, but the Marines add such character and such a, a flavor to Halo. So um, I'm looking forward to how they interact with you in Infinite. And it looks like because Mega Construct has taken such a huge focus on Marines that there's going to be a huge focus on Marines in Infinite. So I'm super yeah, excited about so. it. Yeah, I love, I love everything about this set and I'm probably going to buy more 
And I might stop off and buy the other one just for that red crate. <laughs> I lo- you know, I, how cool would it be to in Infinite where you're like defending a point or defending a base with a with a bunch of Marines? You know, we haven't really done that in Halo. We usually just have That'd a handful of Marines dream. that we have with us. You know, I'd be down. And for you're that. attacking a position, and there's a couple of Marines off to the side, but. Um, they never really make it there, but w- wouldn't that be cool? Or maybe you could somehow direct them around. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if they can incorporate a bunch of Marines or are incorporating a bunch of Marines into Halo Infinite, it would be it could be a really rad experience, unique Halo experience yeah, that we haven't I'm, seen. I'm thinking well, of a lot of missions that are like that first Combat Evolve mission when you're on Halo, where you go pick up their Marines yeah. and you save them and you rescue them and you mm-hmm. load them up on the Pelican. Yes. I'm thinking of a bunch of missions like that where well, and side missions too, like oh. Uh, you can kind of like in Arkham City or Arkham Knight, you know, you have these little side missions like, oh, these guys need help. These police officers need help. And you can choose to help them or you can do it later. But that would be kind of neat if they had like little markers of like Marines that you can go yeah. around and help. Well, well yeah, I, I could totally see that with so many – with it being open world. I mean imagine all of the side mission possibilities that there will be. Uh, I'd be surprised if there wasn't, you know – Save this, you know, Delta Squad or something. I'm gonna. I'd, I'd be all for that. I'm gonna blow your mind because that is a feature. Halo Cannons already mentioned it in a video. He noticed. I can't remember which bit of footage it was because I'm sure it's it was not the map. there in the E3 demo. Yeah, but it's it's not the same one as the demo. I'm sure it's not because I've combed over it. No, it is. But it he, is. Well, he just slowed it down really demo. slow, like because. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, and it just flashes a bunch of other missions that, that yeah. pop up. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it, it is ironically enough, Gabe. It's like Marine Delta Squad rescue the Marines. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, is it seriously? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I. Shout out to Ian anyway, by the way, because he does a lot of really cool content. Yeah, um, for sure. But I I kind of feel like now is the time to do a Marine spin-off as well. Like, if you're doing Infinite as a storytelling platform, give us this chief story as the start, and then mm-hmm. in DLC, let us explore other perspectives on the universe. Totally. Even other sp- perspectives on Delta Halo. While Chief's dealing with Esherim, what's Sarah Palmer off doing, for example, if she's yeah. an infinite? I think if she's all dead, that though? kind of stuff could be cool. Oh, Matt. <laughs> 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 what if what if Hyperius has uh, Sarah Palmer's helmet on his other shoulder? <laughs> he, he does oh not. God. <laughs> Long live Sarah Palmer. I All right. Well, so Gabe, any other <laughs> thoughts on the on this Marine pack? Or we? Uh... I'm jealous. I want it, and I'm broken. So. <laughs> I mean, well, you're on the it, it, evolved it, payroll now, buddy. Yeah, oh, really? I, I'll tell you, it really does. <laughs> oh man, making big bucks. <laughs> I tell you what. But uh, I'll say, probably one of my favorite parts about the Marine set is that it includes um, white yes. armor pieces, which is. I mean, at least to me, it's kind of in reference to, like, the pilots and the army troopers from Reach, just like Tom was talking about. I mean, that's probably one of my favorite features of it. Um, I do like that it includes a plasma launcher, which, again, is a weapon we haven't seen for years Mm -hmm. in a set. So it's, you know, really nice that that's being brought back. But um, I'll definitely be getting it. It's just a matter of when and uh, funds. So, you know, it was on sale. At watch Walmart out for G Custom sale. Just keep an eye on Walmart. It was on sale for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you've got to, for anyone listening, though, the RRP on this set is fourteen ninety nine. Do not pay more than that because Walmart does unfortunately let third parties list it. Um, mm-hmm. And it has been going for upwards of $30. So wait. Yeah, do be not patient. assist scammers. Yeah, this will get restocked. Yep, totally. All right, let's talk about the the buildable helmet and um, i don't know if you guys are going to get this so i'm going to take the lead on this it's a it's a really nice shelf piece and i think we've talked about on the beginning of our coverage of the infinite series is i wanted more of these types of sets shelf pieces because i'm more i feel like i'm more of the collector build it and put it on a shelf um but th- this thing is is it's beautiful. It's the only the only weird thing I mentioned it before. It's a different color green than the rest of the sets. So the, yeah. somewhere along the lines, maybe this is more true to the armor that Chief is wearing in the game than you know what we've seen elsewhere. I guess I don't have a Chief figure nearby to it's compare kind of it to. It's a more vibrant green. So if it's a little bit brighter, I, a little bit. I more would saturated. consider it. I would consider it more drab. Um, it's not. Yeah. It's so the the, the dark. It's dark. It's lighter than um, 
the rest of this the green that we've seen in the other series but it's more it's like a dull green but i you know i'm into it huh. it looks it looks it looks very good uh when it's all pieced, pieced together and i think they did a good job one of the the best parts about it was you the, the first part of the build you're like really not sure what you're doing what you're building yeah. and then you realize that you're building the port in the back of his his helmet to then yeah. eventually stick in the the little chip that comes with it which is really cool. So you're kind of building it upside down and sideways and flipping it around. And then eventually you get to put the visor on and that's a totally unique thing to Mega Constructs. I think it was Maya that did the feature on the San Diego Comic Con um, video a while back. Um, mm-hmm. And sh- just showing how that attaches, it, it kind of loops over one of the studs on each, or actually kind of in two different locations, it's anchored. So it loops around a couple studs, and then you bend it, ar- bend it around. And I think that's probably the best solution, rather than doing a buildable visor, because it does give it yeah. some reflection um, and gives it, you know, a nice angle to really pull the set together. So I'm happy with that. Uh, how they how they did that the stand is nice it's um it's basic but it, it it looks nice it's not like completely flat um and you do you know it has some um, nice angles to it as you as you build it up in a little halo infinite plaque on the front um i really like building the his visor on top that was also a fun um element of the build building that visor that you can just kind of plop on the top at the very end and then you do build the chip itself and the, my only, um, I guess my really the only critique on this whole set is the chip itself. It's a little snug in there, so when I'm trying to, to pull it out, it's uh, sometimes it just pulls out. The, there's these little mm-hmm. rod pieces on on the very end of it, so it pulls those out versus the full chip. So you kind of have to, you know, squeeze it the right mm-hmm. right way with your fingers to pull it out. So it's a little snug in there. And then I am a little disappointed mm-hmm. that they didn't put any sort of transparent blue like some Cortana type blue color in there. Um, I think that they probably could have added that somehow, um, but it's Cortana just a- Cortana bad. Well, <laughs> right. Um, but they, they could have added something, you know, some color to the chip because it's pretty pretty basic when you pull it out. But and it wasn't until I saw Jang Bricks' review of this thing, there's two studs on it. And the two studs are for a figure. It's got to. Uh, it's got to oh. be for a figure. Because so you can put a little. Yeah, you, you can put a little Cortana. Brand. You can put a little Cortana, yeah, Cortana on there. <laughs> exactly. So, and I wonder, mm, she, would she be scaled like a one of our full size Cortanas might be scaled to the to the. Don't even almost? put the chip in. Just put the figure straight in. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, the, so her legs are dangling it's out the back. Her <laughs> legs just sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So overall, I'm very happy. Um, I don't know what do you, what do you guys think of what you've seen from this thing? I, I really want, and I know it's not my idea, um, but I wanted them to come up with a helmet series. It would be yeah. great for them to come out with a bunch of variants on this, and um, the scale itself. Cool. It's sim- more similar to those the mint. What are they called? The um, the micro, the micro fleet, fleet yeah. helmets. Yeah, it's really close to that size. Um, I think it's a cool idea. I think. I'd like a series, but I also worry that people would say they're copying Lego because obviously Lego's just started doing a whole series of helmets for Star Wars and Marvel. Yeah, um, but who who cares? <laughs> if yeah, yeah, no, them, yeah. Well, you know, some people do. You know, some people yeah. like to make comparisons. Um, sure, but I it's petty in my opinion. I think that. For the most, what am I trying to say? I've lost my. I know, I know what I'm trying to say. Let me get back to it. So, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, my brain just went completely there. Is I feel I, so. I've been sat thinking about the color for this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like they kind of have a get out of jail free card because although this is a Halo Infinite branded product, they could easily turn around and say this is Chief's helmet from Halo Three. Boom, colors spot on. Mm. Yeah. That's true, because the color is a little bit different from what you look on on the uh, trailers and mm-hmm. whatnot. But I, I mean, I'm into it. I, I I think it's it's good once you see it. But when you compare it to the other bricks that we've we have in the other sets, then it's like, whoa, it's a little different. So anyway, the the uh, the other thing I didn't mention are the little lights. His lights on his helmet are, are a nice touch, and they they did those with some silver. Um, I don't know what you call that piece, but some l- little silver pieces on each side. So yeah, he's it's. I mean, it's. 
it's a nice little piece. I would definitely recommend picking it up. And I have it um, on my desk, uh, the desk that I'm working from at home now. And it's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Nice. I dig it. All right. All right. Why don't we wrap up the show? So we have covered a lot in the, over the course of these yeah. podcasts. Really, the only that we haven't covered, uh, because they just haven't really been out there yet, are the uh, mercenary combat units. I think they're in Canada, I believe. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen any in the U.S. yet, or um, I don't know, Tom, maybe not in the U.K. Mercenary combat unit, the UNSC combat unit. We don't know when the platoon pack is coming, the Marine platoon pack. Um, that'll be coming as eventually. There is a blind bag mm-hmm. series, series two, that we did preview on one of the previous shows. The hijack ghost we've also seen. Um, there's probably going to be a Halo Heroes series uh, after the one that we that we received, so that'll show up eventually. And then um, we do want to cover. We mentioned before we do want to cover the alternate builds for all of the, this first wave. So we'll, we'll we'll definitely get into that eventually. But yeah, we've covered a lot of ground. I mean, this has been yeah. it's been a solid wave. We've said it before, but there's been a lot to talk about on on the front. We've had infinite opportunities to discuss <laughs> things. Yeah, you love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So why don't we close the show? We're running a little bit long. Um, any community shout outs or anything you guys want to cover? Uh, I wanted to shout out the uh, Sacred Icon Halo Boys. They just recently did their 50th show. So uh, go over and give them a listen and a shout. Uh, those Brian and Josh are two of the most amazing Halo uh, fans and community. They do a great show. So go check them out. And uh, I'll always shout out John and Bovi uh, and your son, John. So thank you guys for tuning in as always. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, how about yourself? Uh, thank you for all of the love on the YouTube. We are working to try and get more video content going out, and obviously that doesn't just apply to builds with blocks. You've got Krista's great review of Shadows of Reach. Yeah. Um, and we will be trying to work on more video content in the future. We are getting very, very close to 2,000 subscribers already, which is mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. And it has been a lot of fun running point on a lot of video content. And I know I really enjoy it. Matt, I think you really enjoy it. Um, so sure. thank you, everyone, for making it possible because it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys have been yeah. putting in work. It's been great. And uh, I think the views and uh, subscriptions are are you know, following accordingly. So um, thanks for putting on all that hard work, guys. Gabe, how about you? Anything you want to sh- shout out or promote? Actually, I, I do. Um, it's not exactly Mega Constructs related, but it's a good friend of mine. His name is exclamation underscore M-O-K. Um, he's a chibi style artist on Twitter and Instagram who does Halo artwork it's absolutely amazing. His style is unlike anything I've ever seen. He's an incredibly talented individual. So if you don't already, maybe look him up. See if you enjoy his stuff. If you do, give him a follow. Super good friend of mine. He's an amazing, like I said, he's a very talented artist. Awesome member of the community. Great. Nice. Awesome. Well, that will do it for our show. Thanks for joining Builds with Blocks. If you like the show, feel free to support Podcast Evolved on Patreon. Until next time. Evolved. 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 This is for everybody who is reading Shadows of Reach and doesn't know how to pronounce it. That word, yeah, that keeps coming up over and over again. It is Lashadalirite. You're welcome. Lashadalirite.